What's up guys, we're back with another video in the iOS interview question series, and today we're gonna to be talking about filter, map, and reduce. Now to be completely honest, this question wasn't asked in a majority of the interviews, however it was asked enough times that I felt it needed to be included in this series. So let's dive in. So at a very high level, what filter, map, and reduce do is they iterate over a collection, you know, for example, in an array, and they make changes to it and then spit it out into a brand new array. You can pretty much think of it as doing the same thing as a for loop in iterating over the array. It's just a much cleaner way to write it in. For example, a for loop may take four or five lines of code, which we'll see in a little bit, whereas these filter, map, and reduce only take one line of code. So it's a good way to clean up your code and make it less verbose. All right, so let's go over my playground real quick. So from lines 18 and above, this has nothing to do with filter, map, and reduce. This is me just setting up my example, the, uh, the story I'm gonna tell you guys here. Um, but let me walk through it just so you know what's going on. So on lines five through nine, I'm just setting up my struct, which is a, a type device. Um, so picture an Apple device. Uh, it's gonna have a type, which is either, you know, iMac Pro, iPhone, iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, that sort of thing. Uh, it has a price, uh, which is self-explanatory. Uh, and then it has a color, which here at the end, you know, space gray, white, black, space gray, space gray, black. And then here on lines six, uh, 11 to 16, I'm just uh, instantiating new objects uh, of that device type with specific values for the properties. And then here on line 18, I'm throwing all those devices that I created uh, into an array called my devices. And this my devices array is what we're going to use to iterate over using, you know, filter, map, and reduce. Okay, so first let's talk about filter. Uh, here on lines 25 to 31, I have the old way of doing it. It's just a for loop. So what we want to do here is we want to filter out all the devices that are of type iPhone. Uh, so you're going to get my iPhone 6 Plus and my iPhone 7 up here on lines 12 and 13 because they're the only ones that have a type of iPhone. So this is the old way to do it. You would, uh, you know, create a new array called my phones. And then here on lines 27 in the for loop, you would iterate through my devices and then for each device, if the type uh, is equal to iPhone, then you would append your new My Phones array uh, with that device. And then uh, down here, we'll go ahead and print My Phones. And then in the console, oh, we'll come back to this, but yeah, you, you get the gibberish, but you see you have two types. Types iPhone, price 799, color white. So there's my white 6 plus. And then here's the other one, my black uh, iPhone 7. But this is just an example of the old way to do it. Now let me show you how to do it using filter. And we'll do that right under the filter comment here. So remember I said these, these filter map and reduces, they spit out the result into a brand new array. So let's go ahead and create that array. Let iPhones equal, and then we're gonna iterate over the, uh, the array my devices, which is what we have here on line 18. So we're gonna do my devices dot filter. Go ahead and hit enter. And if you hit enter here, you're gonna get this uh, closure. Don't get me wrong, you can do it this way perfectly fine, but I prefer this other way that's, uh, in my opinion, easier to read. Oh, well, once you get used to it, it's easier to read. At first, it's kind of like, what? But anyway, so you do open and close brackets and then just return and then dollar sign zero, which we're gonna get to in a second, dot type equals equals iPhone. Okay, so what's going on here? So this dollar sign zero is basically a placeholder for the object in the array that it's iterating over. It's the same exact thing, if you're, if you're familiar with for loops, which hopefully you are, as for device in my devices. So if you know the for loop, this is basically every device as it goes through the array my devices is this variable called device. Well, just imagine this device variable right here is just this dollar sign zero. So as it iterates over the array, this dollar sign zero is the placeholder for the object. So this is a Boolean value. So basically this is only going to return uh, if dollar sign zero, which the device dot type is equal to iPhone. So basically what this, is, this line is doing here is this is a Boolean value. So if the placeholder uh, dot type is equal to equal to iPhone, then it will append it to this new array that we created called iPhones. Let me repeat that because I understand it might be a little tricky. So let's go back down to this for loop. You know, for device in my devices, you know, if device dot type equals equal to iPhone append uh, my phones with device. Remember this 27 to 31 is the old way of doing it. Let's go ahead and comment that out to not confuse you. But this is doing the same exact thing. It's just all in one line of code. So if um, dollar sign zero, which is the, the placeholder for the device as it's iterating over it, if that type is equal to uh, iPhone, then append it to this new array called iPhones. So again, this one line of code did the same exact thing as these, you know, what, five, six lines of code. Uh, so like I said at the beginning, it just uh, cleans up your code a little bit. It makes it less verbose. Okay, let's go ahead and delete this print statement down here um, that's printing the old my phones from this commented outline. Let's go ahead and print iPhones there. And then it'll be a little bit of gibberish like before, but you'll be able to see the two phones we have. Uh, so again, here we have the iPhone, a price of $7.99, color white. 
and then the iPhone price is 699 color black. So you can see it did the same exact thing we did uh, with this for loop just in one line of code. So that's the whole point of filter. Now map is going to be very, very similar. So I'll spare you the whole for loop uh, comparison and just show you the line of code that will do the same thing for map. So now let me tell the quick story. All these devices here is kind of like my shopping wish list that I want to buy. And these are all the American prices for it. Uh, so I made this list. This is kind of like my wish list. I've saved up money. I'm going to buy it. However, I, now I'm moving to Canada. Okay, so now I have to adjust all these prices to Canadian prices. Um, so a quick and easy way to do that is map. So what map does is map will iterate over my entire array and then apply a transform or an operation, whatever you want to do, to every object in that array. So let's walk through some code real quick. Let Canadian prices, and this is going to be an array of a float. And it's going to equal, now we're going to iterate over my devices because I want to adjust the price of every single one of my devices, dot map. And then again, you could get this closure that we talked about before. I prefer the open bracket, close bracket, where you just put in your, whoops, I need my parentheses, lost those, uh, where you just put in your Boolean value. So return, and then your Boolean is dollar sign zero. Remember, that's the placeholder as you're iterating over the array. This time we want to uh, adjust the price. And now is where we apply our transform or operation, whatever we want to do to it. So because Canadian prices are higher than American prices, I don't know the exact conversion rate. Let's just call it 1.2. So what I'm doing here through my, my devices array is I'm iterating over it and then I am altering every object's price value and I'm multiplying it by 1.2. So just to prove that out, let's go ahead and print Canadian prices. You see now my prices have all been uh, multiplied by 1.2. So now I have the Canadian prices uh, for each one of my devices. So map is very similar to filter. Instead of filtering out something, you are actually just uh, manipulating each object by an operation. You know, you can multiply it, add it, you know, do whatever you want to it. Um, if it was text, you could make it all uppercase or, you know, take out a letter. Here's, you can do pretty much whatever you want, but the point is you are uh, changing every object in that array. Okay, so let's clean up a little bit. Let's get rid of this print statement up here to clean up my console. Um, now let's talk about reduce. Now I have this, uh, let's uncomment this now because this is the old way of doing it. So what reduce does is reduce will combine all of your values into one. So for example, I have my Canadian prices here. This is just a list of Canadian prices that you see down here. What reduce will do in the typical example is to sum up all those prices into one, but we're gonna do some different stuff with that as well to show you the uh, flexibility of reduce. But the typical way of getting a total price is you have your var total price and then you just iterate over the prices uh, in the array. So for price and Canadian prices, you just uh, increment your total price by that price and that gives you the, the total price down here on line 52. So let's take a look at that by print total price. And you see here I have 9,172.8 and that's in Canadian dollars because it's what I converted here by multiplying it by 1.2. So again, it took you know five, six, seven lines of code to do that. We're gonna do it in one. So let's check it out. So again, filter, map, and reduce all throw their results into a new variable. So let's go ahead and create that. So let total Canadian price and that's a float equal, and then we're gonna do the Canadian prices uh, collection or the array, dot reduce. And then as you can see, we get this, you know, gibberish here. There's a lot of different ways to write this. And reduce always confused me, but I actually found a pretty simple way to do this online that really cleared it up for me. So we're not even gonna mess with uh, all this stuff here. And we're just gonna do uh, what's called a combined closure here. And what that does is that takes in an initial value so we're gonna start at zero because we wanna just get the sum of what all of these Apple devices are gonna cost me to buy in Canada. So 0, 0.0 is our initial value. And then we just kind of put in an operator here, which is just a plus. So let's actually comment out our old for loop just to avoid confusion here. And then now let's go ahead and print total Canadian price. And that remember it was like 9,100 something. Yep, there it is, 9,172. So again, what this is doing is this is, here's our collection of Canadian prices that we got from our map function up here on line 39. And then we just wanted to reduce that down into just sum it up. So we started with our initial value and then this plus means we want to sum it up. Now, initial value is zero. So that's going to give us the sum of um, Apple devices. But let's say, I don't know, again, just making up a story. Let's say we wanted to get our total move prices to Canada. And we said, hey, it's going to cost us, uh, you know, 22,578, uh, whatever, 22,567 uh, Canadian dollars, and we wanna add our Apple devices to it. So you just put in your initial value here of that 22,000, and then you add 
you know, our Canadian prices, which was like 9,100, uh, whatever, and then we get that sum. So again, the initial value can be whatever you want it to be. It can be zero if you just want that. But conversely, let's say I had $20,000 saved up and I wanted to just subtract off the price of all my Apple devices. So I just changed that plus to a minus. And then now I have my 10,827, which is the 20 grand minus the 9,000, uh, roughly 9,000 for my Apple devices. So basically what I'm trying to get at is with this initial value and these operators, I mean, you can multiply and divide uh, in this example, that's gonna get you some crazy numbers, so I won't do that, but long story short, you start with initial value and then you can do your operator based on the total from your uh, array here, so the total Canadian prices. So again, to wrap up, what filter, map, and reduce really do for you is it cleans up all your long, messy for loops. Uh, like I said, it really combines something that could be five, six, seven, eight lines of code uh, down to one line of code. So it, it's really nice when you're trying to make your code less verbose and more readable. I like it. All right, so now you know how to use filter, map, and reduce on collections. If you found this at all useful, go and hit subscribe. I put out new videos all the time.